Hey everyone, welcome to Neil Talks. My name's Neil, and it's time to talk The Boys. So last episode, we filmed the movie, we fired a train, Homelander and Stormfront hooked up. Billy wanted to commit suicide, but ultimately saved himself to save the team. Black Noir got hit by a bunch of claymores, but doesn't seem to phase him. But he got called off by Edgar because Butcher threatened, fought with photos, photographic evidence of Homelander's son. Kind of quiet episode, all told. <laughs> um, yeah, the Deep is fully in on his uh, Church of the Collective. Maeve has a proposal for him that might get him back into the Seven. Not sure what the Collective's objective is, but we've been introduced to its leader briefly in a commercial starring the Deep. We... We've also been introduced in person to this uh, this congresswoman who's been popping up on the, the news a bunch lately, and she seems to be anti-soup, so I'm sure something is going to evolve out of those new characters. No idea what. Again, I'm not going to try and predict this show because this show is bonkers. But yeah, what else? Kamiko is doing uh, hits for hire through Cherie, uh, Frenchie's on again, off again, girlfriend. Frenchie's given up on trying to save Kamiko. <sighs> I feel like that's almost everything. Stormfront is uh, resistant to Homelander's laser eyes. We found that out when they had sex at the end of last episode. Very, very violently, I might add. Yeah, I don't know what else to say. Let's jump into this episode. This is episode 6 of season 2, and it's called The Bloody Doors Off, with quotes around it. So what does that mean? Oh, we're getting Frenchy flashback. The point is, mm -hmm. I learned everything I know from those girls. The Golden Girls. <laughs> Turning tricks, begging for the scraps. Who you think of me company? So the boys' role models are the Golden Girls and the Spice Girls. You are. Boys and girls. Mm, but the boys are back in town. Oh, what a fucking question. Of course I'm Betty White. <laughs> now, who wants to rob a bank? Fuck yeah. I need this trip out now. I understand, but oh, you... Oh, jeez. Lemo. <laughs> No, 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 I don't. I mean, I, yes, I, I do, do, of course. It's just... It's my sting a little. <laughs> You're dremeling her, her neck with a... presumably a diamond tip saw blade. Ah! Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Oh, my God. Okay. <laughs> One more time. <laughs> One more time. Blood on Huey's face. There's the chip. Uh. Wow. So if she's smart, she keeps the, the chip like in her wallet or something. So it's on her most of the time, but she can leave it in her room when she needs to. Uh-oh. It's like you can't even do, do your, your job, job anymore. anymore. <laughs> please, please, just take me in. Just take me in, please. No, buddy, you're, you're, you're going to die so hard. It really speaks to the deterioration oh. of good. God fearing. We're just going to crush your skull, aren't we? <laughs> Jesus. Oh my god. This is where you're living? Yeah. Yep. You know, has its charms. The rats are like uh, Pokemon. With the hep C. Oh. <laughs> Remember me? Well, well, well. That wasn't what Why have we uh, necessarily expecting. What's she doing here? Uh, she has a lead on Stormfront. It is interesting that Vought knows that Stormfront's liberty seems an interesting choice for Edgar to make. Brave Maeve Pride Force, oh, because geez. we can't be proud on an empty stump. <laughs> Brutal. Did you find it? No, sorry. No black box. But told a couple of my oh, the plane. to keep an eye on the North Atlantic current. And they found this. <sighs> Someone's GoPro. Here comes the A-frame with the police feet, saving lives, taking names nice and easy. Isn't it lit? Your very own anthem. 
<laughs> By middle-aged white guy. Yeah, it's dope. Go into mine. Okay. Well, like they're using their I love that they said he's going ten one. That's code for going to the bathroom on set. Anyone knows what it's like to get bounced, it's me. I'm good, man. Oh, that's great. Yeah. Yeah. Well then uh I guess you don't need his help. Or uh you know, never mind. Forget I even said anything. Who's? Madonna, right? Is that his name? The head of the church? You like a fresco? The freaking frescoes, man! What's up with the freaking frescoes? <laughs> oh. This is what you bought. With your blood money. Bossy. I believe you an orderly with that. Don't get cool. I never do. Eight years ago? <laughs> Who wants to rob a bank? Someone got caught. <laughs> Weaponized Xanax. Oh. I could use someone with your imagination. Fuck you. ADX Florence. It's a supermax in Colorado. They've got the Unabomber, head of the Aryan Brotherhood. You can't just ask. She can. Wait. Wait. <laughs> I like that we're getting their backstories a little. I have a surprise for you. I will be back in 20 minutes. I'll let you surprise me wherever you want. <laughs> yeah, okay. Oh, so easily manipulated, so needy. From who? Oh, well, that was for her. Oh, I'm an idiot sometimes. He's in love. I see him. Resist the urge, Butcher. Jesus, man. Soup doesn't automatically mean evil. Hopefully he's going to wrap his head around that eventually. You did it. <laughs> what is your problem with me? I ain't got no problem with you, love. Really? That's why you won't even touch my hand? I'm subhuman to you. Only good soup is a dead soup, right? Your words, not mine. It's, That's it's enough. butcher's form you know of what? racism, isn't Underneath it? Underneath all that swagger, you're just a bigot and a bully. I know another guy just like that. He's got a flag for a cape. Is that Homelander? No, that was her. Oh, fuck me. What's wrong with him? Easy. We just kill that guy? Holy fuck. What's going on here? Oh, it's all soups. Maybe. Failed soups. God damn. Brother's got a love sausage. <laughs> How many of these are going to be characters? That guy senses them. How you doing today? Good. He look familiar to you? Je sais pas. Well, I'm not doing any more of these stupid pet tricks until I talk to my sister. Okay. You're gonna have to kill him. Lamplighter. That's fucking Lamplighter. It's Lamplighter. We never met Lamplighter. We've learned about Lamplighter. But we've never seen him. Stick to the plan, Frenchie. Okay, so they're they're stealing data, presumably, yeah. All the hard drives. Okay, okay, she just left. Get the hell out now. Restrain yourself. Uh oh. Who did we just let out? Hey, Cindy.
Whoa! She's the assassin. She did the head. Just get out of she here! She did the head. I'm sure, like... Holy crap. Cindy's... Oh, there's a breakout. They're all out. Stay the fuck back or I will burn your skin off, asshole! Oh, you want to get that chance! Holy crap. It's just gonna be a freaking massacre. All you're gonna do is piss her off. So why don't we all just calm down and live through this motherfucker? Oh, that's, that's terrible soup design if your own vomit burns you. <laughs> Damn. Okay, you guys can come. <laughs> Fuck. I don't want them to hurt me again. Oh, jeez. Holy crap. Huey, jeez. Are you alright? Yeah. Fine. Uh... Oh, shit. <gasps> what about the others? They're on their own! Okay. 20 minutes. He's literally just clock watching. I've got you flowers. Okay, Did we blow the whole trailer? Jeez, Homelander. What happened to your trailer? Electrical fire. That was your meeting. He's so needy. I went to the tower, and uh, you weren't there. Hold on, let me... Explain? Why would you need to explain anything to me? I've seen that documentary about you guys. It's not my type of shit. For a man in seven-figure debt, a heart condition, and in heavy withdrawal, do you really think you have the luxury to get up and leave? <laughs> Seven figure debt. That's not fun. They're going to give Shockwave your uniform. You know that? Man, fuck you, man. I can help. I can get you back in. Sit down. <laughs> I love that there's Orinoco Flow by Enya playing in the background through all of this. Come on, in here. I was not expecting Lamplighter to ever become a. A character of interest. I thought he was just the excuse to open up a slot for Starlight. He's beautiful. <laughs> All the drugs. I remember you, you know. You were tailing me the night that I torched those kids. So why didn't you stop me? Come on! He's gone! Come on! And I don't want to hear no bullshit about I'm going to get tired of the pussy. <laughs> the bachelor party I will throw you. What's your thoughts about transgender strippers? <laughs> You're going to tell us every single thing you see and hear at the tower. Please don't pretend like you have a choice. Easy peasy. I don't like it. They don't back an animal like that into a corner. Don't let him out of your sight. We oui, mother. So this is the night. So they tried turning him and he immediately went and killed Mallory's grandkids. I need you to get out of your car. <laughs> what are you talking about? Stay back. Whoa! Okay. He said stay back. That's not necessary. I'm taking your keys. Butcher, stop. Buddy, just put the gun down. I said stay back. I said put it down. That didn't sound like a good landing. She doesn't seem too freaked out. You couldn't just listen to me and stay back? Yeah, Butcher's not exactly the staying back kind of guy. Did she kill him? Oh my god, she did. Come on. Look at all the blood. Quote horizon. Is there a kid in the baby seat? Please tell me there's not a kid in the baby seat. Okay, at least there's... I mean, yeah, they just killed the father, but... Or did she? She's, she's not acting like she just killed somebody. Why are we still alive? I 
You never came for us. You're disappointed we didn't kill you? I thought the seven always retaliates, no? You didn't tell them, did you? I figured you boast about it to Homelander. Must have been thrilling for you. I'm not a fucking animal. A you fuck. watch them burned alive, crying for their mama. If that's not an animal, then what is, huh? I didn't know! You were supposed to be your boss. Jeez. I keep asking myself, why? Why didn't you stop me? Good question. What? Jay, he's ordained. I don't, I don't know what he took. Take him to the hospital. Please come now, come. He failed to save his friend and the kids died. Where are you going? Don't let him fall asleep. What? I told you I have something. Something more important than this, you... more important than us. Please, stay with them. Why do you want to go? Go. We don't give a shit. He's burning up. I'm going as fast as I can. Maybe once I would have cried over him, but now he was just another person in our way. No to that fucking look of quiet respect or approval or whatever that is. I don't want it. We're nothing alike. Nothing. She hopes. Vought is trying to stabilize it so that you put the V in any adult arm, anywhere, anytime, and you get a solid soup, solid powers. Why would Vought do that? It's gonna fuck up their movies, their merchandising. But they don't tell me. They just make me burn the evidence. Just because you make them doesn't necessarily mean you can control them either. My best friend, Odido, I was away for 30 minutes. Came back, you were gone. Did you live? He died a few months later, another overdose. After all these years, man, we would have let you off the hook. What makes you think I want to be let off the hook? He blames himself for the kids. Oh, Jesus! It's plastic man! <laughs> Is that the, his dick? <laughs> oh my god. Don't be so close minded. <laughs> Cindy. They're not done with Cindy. Cindy's playing for a couple episodes, I think. Or not. Lamp lighter! I'm here. Is he gonna wrap them out though? I think he's gonna pretend that they're not there. What the hell happened? So Lamp Lighter's a kind of good guy? It's the kid shampoo he uses. Strawberry smoothie, I'll see in a bottle. <laughs> and his Axe body spray. Oh. He slavers his bum with creamy dissident. No. I fucking swear to God, he's got rashes down there. I don't want to know that. Fucking mental, that's all I'm saying. <laughs> but he really just never gives up on you, does he? Aye. He's too good for either of us. <laughs> Look at them bonding. Uh-oh. Oh, no. Elena's going to see... The footage and it's good in. Elena. This is our out. I know I should have stood up to him. I know that. Why are you looking at me like that? Hey, tell Butcher about the thick penis around your neck. <laughs> I was trying to save you. I thought, though. If I did, somehow that would make up for the things I've done. You never ask to be safe. I leave you alone. Now is when she kisses him. Or speaks. 
Who's this? Where is he? I know I wasn't welcome at the funeral, so all these years I couldn't offer my condolences. Where is he? Why isn't this man restrained? No need. I wanted to come. I don't want to hear a single goddamn word from you. You'd be doing me a favor. Do it. Besides you, no one wanted him dead more than me, but I am begging you for his life. I have no choice. It won't help you. You cannot punish him as much as he punishes himself. You remember you told me that you don't break easily? I will tell you everything, starting with this. My daughter. I was born in 1919, in Berlin. She was 103. She was one of the first in Germany. She's a Nazi. Did she marry Vought? He gave me the first successful V injection, and then we fell in love. He made me, and his genius made you. We are in a war. The other races are grinding us down and taking what is rightfully ours, but we can fight back with an army of supermen, millions strong. And you Does will Edgar be the know man that? who will lead us. This is a race war. So I love you with all of my heart. How could I not? And that is the truth. Thank you for being oh, and now we're playing Golden Girls over top of this? That's so messed up. That's so messed up. Okay, we've got some escape. Cindy's escapes. Okay. Um, something really interesting is happening with this show. It's easy to just sort of look at the surface of this show and and laugh at the over-the-top violence and the absurdity of so many of these situations and um, a 40-foot monster penis that's choking M.M. out and just the, the absurdity of it all. And then the show's just actually gotten pretty freaking serious. Why does Vought want to be able to inject adults with Compound V and turn them into viable working suits? Well, apparently, if Stormfront is to be believed, and she just gave a lot of photographic evidence to that effect, it's to win the race war. I mean, that's crazy. That's, that's crazy stakes, man. But it's basically to, to fulfill the Nazi vision. Like, this, this is Hitler's dream. Come to life in 2022. Uh, it's so messed up. I mean, we've been hinting at it from the beginning of this season, especially, you know, um, a lack of diversity amongst soups. But... I thought it was just personal racism as opposed to institutional, planned, corporate racism. And, and, and the confusing factor, of course, is that Edgar, well, at least the actor playing Edgar, is black and Hispanic, and he seems to be fully in the loop about what the company's doing, but he, how, how can he endorse that? It seems so antithetical but i don't know i don't does he ultimately answer to stormfront like, like vought is aware of who stormfront is vought is at least aware that stormfront is liberty do they know more than that i imagine that they do that she is in fact vought's first test subject and wife that she's a hundred and some odd years old if this was filmed in, if this came out in 2020, she's 101. She's looking fine for 101, but she's not a casual racist. She is a, 
that that's her driving force. The show's getting serious and it's not just there. Suddenly there's like some proper drama, you know, often real drama is missing from superhero stories and, and as interesting as the show's been up to now, the, the drama's been almost melodramatic just because that's almost been the style of the show. But then we get these, the, the, the scene with Maeve and Elena when Elena discovered the footage from the plane. And, and Maeve's trying to explain herself and Elena's just silent, but in shock. And you don't know what she's thinking, but you can only imagine. And the, these scenes are beginning to hit me emotionally. And I, I appreciate that. This, this isn't necessarily, this has been primarily just fun watching the boys. And and they're still throwing us the fun scenes, you know, just all the, the mayhem of escaped, failed soups, basically. But, but then they just drop these emotionally complex, heavy scenes on us, too. We're allowing for some character growth. We, you know, we we finally might be breaking through with Billy, like he and Starlight bonded this episode in in their mission to save Huey from dying. Starlight killed the, the, the driver and, and her reaction was not what I expected and that's why it was so confusing to begin with. I thought she just sort of realized, okay, I've just knocked him out, we can take his car and leave, but no, she she killed the man and she seemed to be Quite dismissive of it. I mean, she would say she's just being practical, that it's just someone who got in the way of her doing what needed to be done. Collateral damage, for lack of a better word. But I mean, that's almost the theme of this entire show so far is what are the acceptable, what is acceptable collateral damage in the pursuit of your goal, no matter how good it is. Um, because everyone in this story is the hero of their own story and they all have a goal that they are laser focused on and they will do anything to achieve and they, they feel they're doing the right thing, every single one of them. Everybody feels they're doing the right thing, but we're often at cross purposes. And so when, when is collateral damage too much? Is any collateral damage too much? I don't know. It's a proper discussion. It's a proper debate. but. But we're beginning to get a sense of where Starlight sits on that, uh, on that question. But the best part about this episode, after all that other stuff, which is all great, and I feel like this, this, this episode in particular really kind of the show evolved in this episode. But I love that we got Frenchie's backstory. Frenchie's always been really a, an interesting, cool character, but now we learn so much more about him that he's, you know, a, a bank robber targeting soups in an effort to save his friends. He goes to work for Mallory, seems to do that for three years with some success. The team, that team is together, Mallory and Butcher and M.M. and, and Frenchie, Serge, and they, they attempt to turn Lamplighter. They obviously got some incriminating photos of the man. And... And Lamplighter, instead of agreeing to their terms, goes to Mallory's home and thinks he's about to, that he's killing Mallory, that he's torching her in her bed. But it turns out that's where her grandkids were sleeping. And they died. And Frenchie couldn't be there to stop him because he was answering a 911 call from Cherie. What was his name? Ray? Ray was dying. And uh, he saved his friend. But he only bought his friend a couple of months life, uh, of life before he OD'd again. And he's been sitting with that guilt because he wasn't there to save Mallory's kids. You know, like, do you save your friend? Do you protect your, your you know, innocence? The, 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 there's no win-win. You know, no matter what you're doing, you're, you're putting somebody at risk. And he pursued the, the obvious risk versus the less apparent one. But man, poor Frenchie. But we also learned so much more about Lamplighter. We met Lamplighter, you know, when, when you watch the pilot and you see Starlight being introduced and you learn that Lamplighter retired and you, and you just sort of think, oh, that's just a, a random name that they've written off the team to facilitate Starlight joining. But we met Lamplighter and he 
all we've heard about him is he was this monster that killed Mallory's kids five years ago, and it turns out he made a mistake. And he's been living with that guilt ever since. And now he's willingly working with the boys. And what's that going to do? Does, does that mean we've got two soups on this team? Is, is Lamplighter going to end up being end up being a good guy? I, I want to see more of them. I'm very interested. And you know, we set up a bunch of new soups when we visited Sage Grove Hospital in this episode. We set up Acid Vomit Boy. We set up Monster Dick Man. We set up Cindy, who appears to be able to just crush anything just by squeezing her hand, like tel telepathically crush anything, including Rainer's head, I'm guessing. She, it, it, the effect seems very similar. And so has she been taken out occasionally for specific missions or how, what's her range? Can she do it from within the hospital if she's thinking about someone, focused on someone? I don't know. But she's loose now. Not everybody is uh, back in their cells at the hospital. She's loose. She's hitchhiking into town. And um, yeah, she's a wild card. A cool one, though. She can, she can be shot without effect. And she can crush almost anything instantly. She is susceptible to uh, Stormfront's powers, though. Stormfront's becoming more and more... Power, like, it, it's tough gauging everybody's uh, relative powers amongst the suits. We know Homelander's right up at the top, but where does everybody else sit? Like, if, if we had a, a, a knuckle duster of a fight between Starlight and Stormfront, who would win? How about between A-Train and the Deep? Um, where, where does Black Noir sit in all of that? It's interesting, you know, how... How would Kamiko do versus any of them? Probably not. We've seen her against Black Noir, and that didn't go too well. But, um, yeah, I really feel like this episode did something to the show. I feel like this episode, the show evolved. The show, that for all its fun up to now, it, it, it just got serious. It, and yet, I think it's going to be able to find that balance. And... It, give us some more properly dramatic, serious moments, but still scatter in just those, oh my god, ridiculous, over-the-top gory moments as well. We our, our blood on Huey's face count went up by about 0.3 this episode from um, Starlight getting her chip out. Just a spray, not a full drenching like he's used to. Probably didn't even barely notice. But um, we're tracking that. Might as well, right? <laughs> that was an impressive episode. I really liked that episode. And I'm looking forward to the next one. So until then, everybody, take care. Stay healthy. We'll see you soon. Cheers.